Dear Prime Minister Rama, dear Commissioner Simpson, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to welcome Prime Minister Eddie Rama and express gratitude to him for being with us at this important event. Albania and Azerbaijan are two friendly countries. We actively cooperate in different areas. Uh, we have a very active political dialogue, and my meetings with the uh, Prime Minister have a, a regular agenda in Albania, in Azerbaijan, on the sidelines of uh, different international events. We support each other in international institutions and also work actively on energy security issues. Albania uh, played a very important role in implementation of the Southern Gas Corridor project and continues to play an important role as a member of TAP team. And uh, now we are discussing different uh, aspects of our energy cooperation. And I'm sure that during today's discussions with Prime Minister, we will address all the outstanding issues. I'd like also to express the gratitude to Madam Commissioner Simpson for visiting us again. As you know, Commissioner Simpson and the Minister of Energy of Azerbaijan are the co-chairs of the Advisory Council of the Southern Gas Corridor. And uh, they play an important role in bringing the big team and growing team together. And, uh, of course, um, important role of EU in um, implementation of all our plans. And, of course, Azerbaijan-EU cooperation on energy diversification, on energy security issues, I think created absolutely new geography of supplies. Uh, during many advisory councils in the previous years, we always addressed the issue of uh, energy security. And Azerbaijan's position was uh, very consistent, that we considered it as an important factor of national security of every country. And, of course, uh, when we were talking about diversification, our position always was and is that it must be diversification not only of supply routes, but also sources. And today's geopolitical situation in Eurasia proves that uh, exactly uh, what we needed to do. And in case of Azerbaijan, Southern Gas Corridor is absolutely new route with now many extensions and uh, interconnectors and Azerbaijani gas is a new source. So here, in this format and in the projects which we initiated, we see full implementation of energy diversification issues. Since we met last time, a year ago, here in Gulistan Palace, there have been several important milestones. And as usually, uh, during the advisory council meetings, the group reviews what has been done and uh, sees what additionally must be done to uh, tackle all the outstanding issues and, most important, plans the future, mutual and common steps. Uh, one of the important events during the last year period was beginning of uh, commercial production of natural gas from Apsheron gas condensate field in the Azerbaijani sector of the Caspian Sea. This was the second largest discovery of huge gas deposits after Shardanis. And actually, Apsheron uh, gas condensate field uh, will be also a resource base for our future um, energy diversification projects. The first phase of uh, Apsheron project have been approved, and we expect uh, annual production at a level of 1.5 billion cubic meters. And when we agree on the second phase, that will add additional from 4 to 5 BCM, which will also be channeled, uh, most of it, on the international markets. 
Uh, another important achievement, I would say, is that Azerbaijan uh, last year started to supply natural gas to two more countries, namely Hungary and Serbia, thus uh, expanding the geography of our supplies in Europe. And today, Azerbaijan is supplying natural gas to eight countries. Six of them are European countries. And of course, uh, interconnectors projects, which uh, have been inaugurated last year in Europe. First, they were generated by Southern Gas Corridor project. And second, they will allow us uh, to continue our efforts in order to embrace as many destinations in Europe as possible. Uh, demand for Azerbaijani gas is here. Resources we have. Uh, transportation routes exist. And by the way, during the um, active communication with our Turkish friends uh, during the last year, we uh, agreed on using uh, through Turkey the Trans-Balkan gas pipeline system. And uh, this is, I would say, diversification inside the diversification project. And uh, there can be many more other alternatives and many more options, because all of them serve the common goal, how to address uh, with maximum efficiency issues of energy diversification and energy security. Azerbaijan, I think, already proved to be a reliable partner. Our word means the same as our signature. And all the plans which we've uh, put in front of ourselves, I'm sure, will be implemented because only the performance of the last year demonstrates that. Another important uh, uh, moment for our energy project is that uh, the company from the friendly United Arab Emirates, ADNOC, became a shareholder of Absheron project. And we welcome that, welcome to the team. And that will add uh, additional financing and also expertise and will um, enlarge international cooperation. Uh, we have requests from uh, many energy companies to work with us, and all of them are being reviewed based on the performance and based on the, our energy agenda. With respect to our future plans, uh, of course, today it will be discussed broadly, but I just want to mention some of them. First of all, we expect beginning of uh, production of natural gas in the first quarter of uh, next year from uh, Azeri Chira Gunashli deep gas project. Uh, this is a very promising structure with a very large deposit. For many years, Azeri Chira Gunashli is a main uh, source of our oil exports. And now, with these uh, huge gas deposits, which we already agreed with our partners to explore, that will be additional contribution. Uh, in the beginning, the production is uh, planned at around of half a billion cubic meters, but it will grow maybe three, four, maybe five times within several years, being additional source to uh, gas supply along with Chardonnay and Apsheron. And also, we have plans to develop a second phase of UMID gas condensate field, which potentially can bring additional from two to three BCM within three, four years. So all these plans are absolutely realistic. They are based on a thorough analysis, data, information, and our uh, financial resources, as well as our agreements with our investors. Some of the projects will be implemented together with investors. Some of the projects will be implemented by SOCAR itself. And uh, so all that demonstrates that potential is here and potential is uh, growing. 
So all kind of rumors which have been circulating for many years that there is no enough uh, gas in Azerbaijan to supply the growing needs of uh, European consumers, all of those rumors um, once again show that they're absolutely groundless and was a part of the campaign against Azerbaijan in order to undermine our potential and to send the wrong message to international community and uh, consumers. Azerbaijan also is part of the green transition process. This year been announced in Azerbaijan and declared as a Green Year Solidarity. And our renewable projects also demonstrate high level of performance. Among them, again, since we met last time, I'd like to inform you that last October we inaugurated the first uh, big solar power plant in Azerbaijan with a capacity of 230 megawatts. Uh, which was built by uh, Mazdar company, one of the leading companies in the area of renewables. And uh, this is only the beginning. Uh, according to signed contracts and MOUs, we plan to generate up to 5,000 megawatt or 5 gigawatt of solar and wind uh, energy uh, until 2030. Our main investors are Mazdar from UAE and Aquapower from Saudi Arabia and also companies from other countries also are uh, working with us. We have huge potential of renewables, whether it's the Caspian Sea or our onshore potential. And as you know, with this uh, Black Sea green cable project, we uh, plan to become also an important exporter of green energy to Europe. Um, and it is already decided that it will be integrated project from wind farms from in the Caspian Sea uh, with the new transmission lines all the way down to Europe under the Black Sea. So these are the plans, and of course, uh, the more renewable sources we have, the more natural gas we will save, which now we use for electricity, and that will be additional contribution to Southern Gas Corridor. Southern Gas Corridor operates already for three years. It is a really success story. It is uh, one of the biggest infrastructure projects in uh, Eurasia, integrated pipeline system of uh, the length of 3,500 kilometers. This project is a project of energy security and project of cooperation, because without cooperation between all the countries which are situated on route of the Southern Gas Corridor, it would have been possible to implement this project. So we come to important point where we see energy, and fossil fuels as an instrument and a means to build partnership and cooperation. And uh, last point on uh, fossil fuels issues. We now see a kind of a trend uh, that uh, fossil fuel is something which brings only problems. We need to be fair and also uh, need to be fair with the countries rich with oil and gas. It is not the fault of these countries that they have oil and gas. They must not be blamed for that and uh, discriminated. I think the performance of the countries uh, with uh, fossil fuels must be judged by how they address the issue of environmental protection, how they uh, address the issue of green transition, and only after that, after fair analysis, the judgment can be made about these countries. Otherwise, we will see kind of a dividing lines between oil and gas producers and those who do not have these resources. Uh, and talking about that, of course, I'd like also to draw your attention 
to the issue of financing, taking into account that we have representatives of the leading financial institutions of the world here at this table. The financing of the expansion of Southern Gas Corridor and any other project uh, related to natural gas must be done in such a way uh, not to undermine our main target. There was and there is a big demand from Europe for Azerbaijani gas. We have been approached by many countries. As I said, six already are recipients of our natural gas. There are several more where we have negotiations. And the gas is needed, and we have resources, we have infrastructure. And I think that the financing from uh, European financial institutions, at least, of this project must be done based on a realistic approach and should not be overshadowed by a general anti-fossil fuel trends. We all know what is happening. Azerbaijan, as I said, is in active phase of a green transition, but at the same time, uh, no one can ignore the fact that without fossil fuel, the world cannot develop at least in the foreseeable future. Uh, and the last point. Azerbaijan um, has the honor to be a host country for COP29. As soon as the decision was made in uh, last uh, December, immediately we've been attacked by different NGOs, media, etc., only for one reason, because we have oil. And that was considered to be our biggest fault. So as I say, it's not a fault, it's a gift from the God. But we've been attacked that how can a country rich with fossil fuel be a host of COP? And let's look at it from different angle. Yes, we have enough oil, we have enough gas, we can live without renewables for coming 100 years. All our reserves are proven, everybody knows that. Uh, but the fact that we wanted to host this global event on climate change demonstrates our will. We must be praised for that and not attacked. We did not do anything wrong, but as soon as the decision was made, immediately uh, we faced a coordinated, consolidated, and very unfair attack on us. There have been many attacks on Azerbaijan in the previous years. We have a very thick skin. We can protect ourselves. But I just want to inform you that the decision, and unanimous decision, to organize COP29 in Azerbaijan is a sign of respect of international community to our country. And our willingness to be a host and to contribute demonstrates our green agenda. So I will conclude now. Once again, thank you for being with us. And using this opportunity, I'd like to invite you all to be our partners on this important journey to COP29. Thank you.